Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good. So it looks like it is going down in the words of Cat Williams, all lies will be exposed. 2024 continues to be the year of exposure. It is definitely the worst year of P. Diddy's life, okay? So what's going down is earlier this week, I had talked about it a little bit on my live stream, that Diddy was slumming around in Harlem, okay? We ain't seen Diddy in Harlem. He don't be around nobody broke. Usually he's around his, you know, his homeboy, Stevie J. He decided to take a trip up to Harlem to go visit some old buddies of his. And I don't know who this man is in the red shirt, I'm not sure, but this is the video and the man is saying, oh, anybody messes with Diddy, he's ready to throw hands and knock out teeth and all this extra shit. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Yeah, Harlem shit. First of all, it's all Harlem love. Y'all already know, it's not even saying it in front of him. You know how punches people teeth out playing about him. This is family, this is love, it is all love. And he's brushing those waves. And he's brushing those waves. This is Booby Smooth Groundwork, Harlem, you already love, know what it is. Love, ain't nothing but love, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you guys just saw Diddy with his crackish friend. So after that, Diddy then decided to go meet up with G Depp. Now, if you guys watch my deep dive that I did months ago, G Depp was a rapper on Bad Boy. Um, he put in work. He ended up, you know, finding Christianity, confessing to a crime, and he did 13 years in prison. So out of the blue, Diddy decides to go to Harlem and go visit G Depp. G Depp was released five months ago. So this was their interaction right here. All right, so you guys see Diddy with G Depp, and for me, it's not sincere at all. I think G Depp, you know, he has a forgiving spirit, and you know, he wants to get back into making music, and he doesn't realize he doesn't need Diddy to co-sign him anymore. It's 2024. This is not 13 years ago. But anyhow, um, what's very interesting about this, Diddy's acting like this is his long lost best friend, like he was putting money on his books. But when G Depp first came out, he was asked by Art of Dialogue. Did Diddy spend any time with you? Did he come to see you? Did he, you know, look out for you while you were in prison for 13 years? And the answer, of course, was no. Y'all check this out. Did Diddy reach out to you while you was in prison? Well, he he reached out to me. He reached out to me, you know, inadvertently. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 videos and you know what I mean. Uh, a couple of interviews. I I heard him shout me out. You know what I mean? Yo yo, shout out to Depp. Hold your head. Right. So pretty much the whole time you was in prison, he didn't reach out to you. Yeah. How you feel about everything he did he going through right now? Like his houses getting raided for sex trafficking. How you feel about that? Well, I mean, I, you know, I feel like, you know, whatever's going on, you know, he, he need, you know, he's, he's going to handle it. However, whatever happens, you know, whatever, whatever transpires, you know what I mean? I mean, like I said, man, I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't even know what's going on. You know where I was at, you know what I mean. So, you know, I just, I hope, I hope the brother get around it, man. You know what I mean. Whatever's going on. Shouting you out is not reaching out, okay. Shouting you out is him reminiscing his narcissistic ego being stroked because at one point in time you and him had a hit. He would not have shouted you out if he wasn't adjacent to what he's talking about. So he did not look out for you, but you're steadily living in the past when he did not reach out. He did not call. He did not 
you know, send commentary. He did not reach out to your wife. Let's keep that real, G Depp. So, you know, obviously, G Depp, he's been locked up for a long time. He, he just doesn't know. You know, he went to meet up with Diddy in Harlem and they did the little photo op. And of course, many people like myself and others saw through the nonsense. So then the very next day, surprisingly enough, after his trip to Harlem, the next day he lost some random lawsuit to some man. So a Michigan inmate wins a $100 million lawsuit against Diddy. This random inmate that claims that Diddy had, I guess, sexually assaulted him um, back in the 90s, sued him, and Diddy didn't show up to court. So he won a default judgment of $100 million. And that happened the next day. So, you know, the whole situation is insane. Today, here comes the bomb. Here comes the cherry on top. Don Richards, former member of Danny D. Kane, and also a member of Dirty Money with Diddy and Kaylina. She has come out and she's basically suing Diddy for battery and sexual assault. So this entire situation has the internet going nuts right now. On Twitter, on Instagram, everybody's talking about it. So I'm going to go ahead and read what she is saying happened to her. So according to the suit obtained by TMZ, Don Richard says she got caught in Diddy's web as a participant on his 2004 MTV show Making the Band with the bad boy CEO manipulating her by promising to advance her singing career if she relented to his alleged twisted demands. The former Danny D. Kane member said during onset auditions, Diddy called female contestants fat, ugly bitches and hoes. She said Diddy had particular disdain for her because she was young and excited to work with such a famous person. In 2005, the court docs say that Richard saw another of Diddy's former girlfriends, Kim Porter, crying as she left the music studio with her face all banged up. It was then that Richard said she realized Diddy was capable of violence and her life could be in danger. A year later, Richard was present when Diddy first introduced Cassie, invading her space while transfixed on her in a predatory fashion, according to the docs. In 2009, she says she personally witnessed Diddy high on drugs, throw Cassie against the wall, choke her, and drag her up a flight of stairs in his L.A. home. Richard says Diddy also hurled a scalding pan of eggs at Cassie while yelling, I've been asking you for my shit. I can't stand you, bitch. You never do it right. On other occasions, Richard says Diddy socked Cassie in the face and wrapped his hands around her throat, attempting to strangle her inside his L.A. mansion. This is crazy. Then they go on to say at some point, Richard says that she and the others, including her dirty money bandmate, Kalina Harper, showed their support to Cassie and advised her to leave Diddy, who found out about the conversation and threatened, y'all bitches don't get in my relationship. Adding, don't tell my bitch what she need to be doing. Just make money and shut the fuck up. I end artist. I shelve careers. You could be missing. You bitches want to die today? Meanwhile, Richard said she too became a victim of Diddy's abuse, forcing her to rehearse for 48 hours at a time without sleep. As a result, she dropped a lot of weight, became dehydrated and fatigued while suffering awful rashes. She also says one time Diddy demanded that she come to his Miami home where he was only wearing underwear. When she asked him to put some clothes on, Diddy refused, screaming, this is my fucking house. Diddy's treatment of Richard got worse she says, between the years of 2009 and 2011. Richard says that Diddy once barged into her dressing room while she was naked at his recording studio. She says Diddy inappropriately touched her breast and butt. Diddy, she says, also locked her in a car with heavily tinted windows for two hours as she screamed for help and even calling her dad for help. Richard claims her dad traveled from Baltimore to New York to free his daughter and confront Diddy, threatening to report him to the police. But she says Diddy told her dad, think about your daughter, think about your daughter's career. They reached out to Diddy's reps, but so far, no word back. So this is causing a lot of controversy. One, because if you guys do not know, um, Don was recently featured on Diddy's album that he dropped last year, the Love Album. And that song is called Deliver Me, featuring Busta Rhymes and Dirty Money, which Don is a part of. So a lot of people are saying, you know, if you were going through all this and he was so wicked and you had already gotten out your contract, why would you go back and jump on an album with him? That doesn't make any sense. Some folks are saying that Diddy stole her vocals and used them for this track. 
I don't even really believe that. I believe that she willingly went and, you know, did the track with him. You know, it is what it is. Obviously, she probably needed the money and the exposure. But the thing that bothers me with this situation is the fact that Aubrey O'Day and many others have been talking and sounding the alarm bells on Diddy for years. Let's not forget, after the Cassie incident happened, you know, um, Don said this. Don said, praying for Cassie and her family for peace and healing. You are beautiful and brave, right? But um, Aubrey O'Day has been calling him out for years. She talked about him on several podcasts, you know, the mistreatment. She's been very, very vocal, and I haven't seen Don really have Aubrey's back or speak out or even co-sign anything that Aubrey has said. And I think that's sad because she knew the truth and she refused to say anything um, up until now. So let me go ahead and refresh y'all's memory on what Aubrey O'Day was saying. I wasn't willing to uh, do what was expected of me. Mm. Not talent wise, but in other areas. It's difficult when you're that young to understand your worth as a woman through the men that I was around. And that was very traumatic. I don't think any of us have healed from that. Diddy would be like, you're not hot anymore. Like what happened? You don't have anything like you don't have any curves. You're looking like just you're not looking like I can't get people to think that you're my good looking person. And there was no Me Too at that time. There was no protecting people anyone at that time. You signed a million NDAs and a million contracts that took away all your rights. All right. So you guys just saw those clips. Now, I, for one, believe Don. If you guys were around and you guys watched the making of the band and how he treated those girls, especially Aubrey, he treated them like trash. And he definitely played mind games. He played them against each other. To this day, the only one that communicates with all four members is Aubrey. The rest don't even talk to each other. You know, he definitely pitted D Woods against Don a lot because they were the two black girls in the group. And um, it's just really sad that this happened to her. And I wish she would have spoke up or felt more comfortable speaking up sooner. Um, but it is what it is. She's ready to tell her story and she has the right to tell her story. Um, Diddy is going down. Even right now, he's trying to unload and sell his Beverly Hills mansion. Nobody wants that sex trafficking spot, sir. That's probably going to be on the market for a while now. But like I said, the rabbit hole with this situation goes very, very deep. And, um, you know, with everybody coming out the woodwork against Diddy, it's showing that something sinister was going on in his camp. Between him, his son Christian, Carisha, and all these other people, there was a lot of sinister things going on. Carisha talks about him glowingly and lovingly. She was not put through the same things that the other woman put through. She was also engaging in the abuse with Diddy. I, I really much believe that. And I'm glad that Don is finally speaking her truth. But like I said, I still wish that she would have came out sooner and at least had Aubrey's back. Because a lot of people have been calling Aubrey O'Day a clout chaser. She's just bitter that her career went nowhere. But that lady has been speaking her truth from jump. And when Aubrey decides to eventually sue and speak out, I think all hell's going to break loose. Because she's not going to hold back. She's been holding back and not trying to put it all out there. But I think when she's ready to tell the full truth, there's no coming back for Diddy. So with that being said, I want to hear y'all's opinion on the situation. How do y'all feel about Don Richards coming out and suing Diddy? Do you believe what Don is saying? Because I definitely do. And how do you feel about her not really speaking out until now? Knowing that all of this information has been out and she's been kind of just sitting on it. And a lot of people feel like, you know... Why would she do the Love album if she went through all of this and that? So I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. Feel free to share the video. Don't forget to like the video. And most importantly, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.